Okay, so you now have all of your parts. The only two things you really should need to build a PC is a Phillips head screwdriver and a flat surface. Now the first two parts that you are going to need are our, the motherboard and the processor. So we are gonna start out by unpackaging both of these and be sure to remove the motherboard user manual, all of the extra parts that come with the motherboard and set the motherboard on top of the static proof plastic. This will help prevent any accidental static shock that might damage your motherboard. Now, the next step we wanna do is we wanna remove this placeholder cap right here that is blocking the processor. So that should just pop right off, exposing the socket for the motherboard. And then you're gonna to wanna to disengage this lock right here. Every motherboard is slightly different, but they should all have a lock. Now this opens up the cavity that the processor is gonna sit on. So the next thing we wanna do is take our processor and be very careful to hold the processor by the sides. You never wanna to touch anything that's on the bottom that could damage the processor. Now, if you also notice, there's a little tiny gold triangle in one of the corners of the processor. That lines up with that little triangle you see on the motherboard. Also, if you notice, there's two tiny little grooves on the actual processor. Those line up with little grooves in the socket as well. So, if you just simply place it in, it should only fit in one way. Now, you do not want to press it down or do anything else. Just let it slide right into place on its own. And then you're going to close the lid and we're going to lock it back into place. That locking process is kind of tight. You might get a little worried you're going to damage it. Don't worry, it's meant to be that way. It needs to have a completely solid seal. So next, we're going to remove all this other stuff for now. We'll get back to that later. And we're going to pull out the case. Your case should come with a bunch of screws, cable ties to kind of clean things up, and uh, a bunch of assorted stuff. The one particular type of screw you're looking for is this one. It has its own little screw hole on the top and typical threads on the bottom. I know my camera's not really focusing, but I'm trying to show it to you. My case had these actually already pre-installed, so your case might have those as well. But what you're gonna wanna do is, if they are not pre-installed, you're gonna wanna take your motherboard and set it into the case, making sure that the back ports come out the big hole in the back. And then you're gonna make note of where each of these special holes are. You can see this, each of these holes have little metal rings around them. And these are the holes that you're actually gonna use to screw the motherboard into the case. Now, for example, these holes right here, these don't have that special little metal guard. You don't need to apply one of these screws to the case underneath that hole. Now, what you do is you simply screw one of these things into the case, matching each of these holes on your motherboard. It might take a few trips in and out just to make sure they all line up. But now, once you're done and you have all of the screws in place, let's go ahead and take the motherboard out one last time because now we have to insert this thing. This came with the motherboard and it actually snaps into the back of the case here and lines up with all the ports on the motherboard. So if we take a quick look at the motherboard, we can see that this guard needs to fit like this to match all the ports. So I'm gonna go ahead and snap this in and show you what it looks like. And it looks like I am in. So now I can take the motherboard, slip it into place, everything should line up perfectly on top of the screw holes, and then I can screw the motherboard in. Okay, so it looks like I have the motherboard in, everything lines up correctly, everything is screwed in appropriately. So now the next step we have to do is to put the cooler on top of the processor. So I highly recommend that you guys read the instructions for your cooler. As you can see here, mine came with a lot of extra brackets and mounts and things like that. And it actually wants me to install this particular bracket onto the back of the motherboard. So I had to open up the other side of the case so that I could access the back side of the motherboard. I have to install this little bracket. As you can see, it pops right into place. And then I gotta flip the motherboard back over so I can get the cooler installed. But yeah, seriously, take a look at your instructions. So as you can see here, I have all of my mounting gear in place. I have two new holes that are going to be used to attach the cooler. The final step is to apply the thermal compound. You might see it as a thermal grease, a thermal paste, whatever. But you have to squirt this directly on top of the processor. Make sure you don't get it over the edges. It doesn't spill over. It just has to be right in the middle of the processor and you should be good to go. So finally, the last step is to apply the cooler. As you can see, I have my thermal grease on there 
and this should just fit right on top and squish everything into place. All right, so now that we have our cooler in place and attached, it's not going anywhere. The next thing I'm going to suggest that we do at this point would be connect both of these fans and the case fans, all these cables here, to the motherboard because the next few pieces that we put in are going to be rather large and uh, it might get uh, a little difficult for you to connect these cables after that. Uh, you're going to have to get your fingers into some pretty tight spaces so it might just be easier to do it now. So if you open up your manual for your motherboard, a couple pages in you should see this nice little chart right here and on the side it details exactly what everything is. So you can see I have a few CPU fan power slots right there. I have another two CPU fan power slots up there and that should be enough to connect those fans. And for these cables, these are the, uh, the cables that came in the case. You can see each one is labeled, like if I can get this, my camera to focus. You can see that one is HD audio. Uh, this one right here is probably you're gonna be your power. Um, yeah, power LED. And each of those should have a corresponding match in the booklet. So it's gonna take a little bit of time just to make sure you match everything up. But once you're done, everything should be connected to the appropriate slots on the motherboard and you should be good to go. All right, so it looks like I have all of the cables attached. I have the audio, the USB. I hooked up the power switch, the reset switch. I have all of the spare case fans. Everything is hooked up. Now the next thing I need to do is to install the RAM. Now, if you notice, there's a tiny little slot or notch in the RAM that it's slightly off center, meaning that it will only fit one particular way. So you can't really mess this up. But you do have to make sure that you unlatch all of the RAM slots first. And at this point, they should just pop right in. There we go. All four sticks of RAM have been inserted. All four latches have been closed. The next thing we need to do is install the power supply down here. Now, most power supplies these days are modular, so you actually have the giant brick here with no wires attached because all of the wires are on the side here. Okay, so just go ahead and drop the power supply into the case and line up the screw holes on the back. Uh, there should be a few screws included. Okay, so now that the power supply is in, the next thing I'm going to install is my hard drive. Now, these are actually quite simple. These are more like plug and play nowadays. If you just pop out one of the slots, you'll end up with this nice little case. And your hard drive should just fit right inside of that and slides right back in. So, as you can see, the little screw holes line up with the case. And now, this thing should just slide right back in. And boom, like that, you're done. The back side has the connectors, those come right over to the motherboard, but we are good to go. The next thing I want to install is my wireless networking card. This is one of the smaller X1 PCI slots, and I just want to get that out of the way before I put in the giant video card that I have. Now installing the wireless networking card couldn't be any easier. All you have to do is find one of the PCI X1 slots that you have available and remove the matching panel to go with it. Once you have the panel out, the card should just pop right in. And then you reapply the screw up here to lock it in and you're done. Now that my wireless card is in place, I will attach the antennas at a later time. And the next thing I'm going to install is the video card. So you have to make sure that the lock is unlocked. You have to remove your two back panels because the video card is two slots thick. And then we have to install this thing. Now this bad boy is a lot heavier than I was expecting. It's a lot longer than I was expecting as well. So I am very glad that I got an extra large case to go with this. But let's get this installed and keep moving. Okay, the video card is now installed. The lock, auto locked when you push the card into place. The only thing I have left to do at this point is to hook up power. Now there are several spots that require power and I'm going to have to get the modular cable to, uh, to my power supply here for each of these parts. The first is the video card here. You can see there's actually a special 8 slot power adapter that will connect to the power supply. The next is the 24 pin motherboard adapter. 
I believe this actually comes in a set of 20 and then a separate set of four. Uh, so if you see your adapter has two cables side by side, that's probably what it is. Those, uh, those two join together to make that. And then up here, that little eight slot up there is power for the processor. If you forget that particular power slot, when you turn your computer on, it'll boot up for about one second and then shut right back off. So if that turns out to be the case for you guys, you probably forgot that cable up there. But after that, I'm gonna have a power for my hard drives. I'm gonna have power for any DVD drives I install. And then I think that's about it. Once those are installed, I am ready to turn this thing on and see if it works. Why must you always be here, kitty cat? Look, look, look at that face, look at that face. Okay. Anywho, we are now done. I have the power cables installed. You can see they're all hooked up there. I went ahead and installed an extra set of USB 3.0 ports. I also plugged in my SSD hard drive. I need to get an enclosure for that. But as you can see, I have the power cable for my video card. I have the power cable for my hard drive, or uh, motherboard, power cable for the CPU, and there are power cables wrapped around back for both the hard drive and the SSD. I even had to put a uh, power cable in for the extra USB ports. But I think I'm ready to fire this bad boy up and see if it works. All right guys, so I have Windows installed. I got everything activated. I got Steam installed. I got a few games installed. I think this bad boy is ready to test out. So let me go ahead and try out the Steam VR performance test. I ran this on my old PC and I got less than desirable results. Um, I think it was like very low at the best. We recommend you don't even try using it. So let's see what happens now. All right, so there we go. Uh, the VR test came back with a average quality of 11, very high. It tested almost 15,000 frames and not a single one was below 90 FPS. I had absolutely no issues with my CPU. And as you can see, everything was successful. Um, I actually also ran a quick little test on my recording software. It said it was capable of recording up to 316 frames per second while encoding them and saving them. So I think this PC is ready to go, ready to game, and ready to kick some butt. I think that's about it for this episode. If any of you guys are taking it upon yourself to try building your own PC and you run into issues, feel free to leave a comment down below. I will try my best to get back to you and help you out the best that I can. But as always, folks, don't forget to like, subscribe, and keep gaming, folks. Bayside out.